Well here we are, this is the review of my Air Arms EV2. To start off I'll go with some statistics and dimensions. This rifle is 41 inches long and can be adjusted to 44 inches by pulling the butt hook out. The barrel is approximately 18 inches long, mine's a tad shorter because I've brought back the air stripper. The air pressure is 200 bar, but I recommend filling it to 195 bar because I don't think the EV2s like being filled all the way. That's what I was told when I bought this rifle. The colour options for this rifle is um, black, which is obviously the one we have here, blue and red. The EV2 is largely taken from the rifle that came before it, the Air Arms Pro Target. Now that was the rifle that I used previously in my field target competitions. I borrowed that rifle off a friend and that's the rifle that got me into field target and is the reason this sits in front of me today. The Pro Target had a sliding breech block, it was plastic and you push the button over here, um, it was an ambidextrous uh, cocking mechanism and that popped the front bit forward and then you pulled it back to cock it. The EV2 has largely changed from this and now they've moved to a side lever and this two part probe. Um, that pulls back halfway, it's unloaded, and then the final section cocks it completely. You then put your pallet into the into the uh, breech and push it forward and away you go. It is empty. So the cocking is very smooth, very easy to handle. There is a considerable gap between the stock and the cylinder. The reason for this is because if the air in the cylinder heats up, the cylinder can expand and that can uh, shift all sorts of things and knock your zero off. The barrel that I've got here, it was free floated by the previous owner. It was free floated by Nick Murphy, um, it's his job to work on these rifles. The theory of the barrel being free floated comes from the cylinder expanding again from heat. If the cylinder expands, it can move the barrel up which again will cause zero shift. The EV2's action is now covered in a special nickel chrome plating. Now this is rough proof and it is not cheap to make. However, at the end of your shoot you barely need to rub it down with oil. With my TX200, if you just touched it the balloon would be tarnished and over time that would turn to rust. The colour of it is in matte satin. I've noticed that it really does blend well and complement the laminate really nicely. The muzzle brake that comes on it is removable and it also acts as an air stripper. The air gets pushed out of the way um, via these three holes on each side. The air comes out these three holes and that allows the pellet to fly through the air undisturbed by turbulence caused by air coming from the cylinder. The muzzle report is loud from this but that's okay because it's not really a hunting rifle, it's a field target rifle and no one really cares if you've got a loud rifle on a field target match. However, compared to other rifles I've seen such as Styres, it is quieter. Air arms quote that you get 100 shots out of this rifle and from what I've found it's not far off. You can get the regulators tuned so they do a lot more than 100 shots but in any case it's not really worth it. In my opinion 100 shots is plenty and I rarely need to fill up after one outing. The charging system is the T-bar fitting. This is a very safe way to charge it. Once the hose is on and the air pressure is in there um, it's a very safe mechanism and there's very little chance of it coming off and causing injury. The stock as you can see is made of laminate and it's a very comfortable stock. The stock fits me rather well I would say. Laminate is the most stable form of uh, stock. It copes very well in cold temperatures and also in hot temperatures with no shift in the wood itself. The cheek piece is adjustable up and down to allow perfect alignment on the scope. The butt hook also is fully adjustable with rotating sideways, up, down and also these plates here can move. The one criticism I do have is from the hamster. Now this is the Mark II version and our arms have sorted this out. The hamster I find is a little small, so for my style of shooting I tend to want to lean back a bit further and I don't really have the length there to do that. In the Marks 3 to 4 version, the hamster does come to here, which is problem solved really. To fix this, me and my dad have been making our own design of hamster and um, hopefully when that's on there it should work a lot better. The other minor criticism I do have is the direct barrel feed. 
The direct barrel feed is one of the most critical things in field target. That's why you never see anyone with a magazine because you don't have that sensitivity when pushing in the uh, pellet into the barrel itself. The reason I say this is because there's a metal ring around here and you don't really get a very good sensitivity once pushing in the pellet. When you are pushing in the pellet it feels a little dull and this could lead to maybe putting in a bad pellet and you're not even realising. This will lead in a bad shot and a miss which can cause you a competition. That's very minor though and I haven't really had any issues with it so far as bad pellets. It comes fitted with a spirit level and a windicator. Now this windicator and spirit level are a really nice touch because it means you don't have to spend any more money on the extras. The windicator just swings out as any other windicator does and there you can tie your bits of string and uh, tape. I've chosen wool. The trigger has largely been taken from the Pro Target. It's got seven points of adjustment and you can adjust it down to one, two ounces, which is really light. It has a first stage and a second stage. The second stage on mine does have a little bit of creep, that's just because I haven't adjusted it correctly. I've got this trigger set really light and this allows you to not pull the shot because when you're squeezing the trigger, believe it or not, your barrel does move. So it is set so light for optimum accuracy. Another add-on is this palm shelf. It's made of an acrylic type material and this, um, this is just so your hand rests in the same position each time. With field target, consistency is key and this hand being in the same position each time is critical. I think the acrylic does look a bit tacky and it would have been nicer in a laminate but in the FTP 900 which is the replacement of the EV2 they have made this in laminate so there is also a, a little swell in it as well so your hand um, is virtually moulded to it so there's no chance of your hand being in a different position each shot. All of the field target events that I've been to have been awash with the EV2s. They've definitely been the most common rifle along with Styres and now the FTP 900. Another feature that the EV2 has come with is a section here so that you can bolt on your range card. This means you can know what clicks you have and also if you're doing HFT you can put your mill dots on there. I don't use it because I have one around my neck which seems to suit me just fine. Always nice to have the option though. Power adjustment is very easy with an Allen screw there. This means that if your rifle is overpowered you can easily turn it down. When I had this it was just nudging 12 foot pounds and it was also over the limit for field target competition so I had someone take that down for me as it was the first time I'd handled the rifle and I didn't know how to do it. Over the chronograph this rifle was very consistent with a maximum spread of 5 feet per second. It was shooting 776 feet per second up to 778 feet per second so even less than 5 feet per second spread. A feature that I like on the rifle is it has stippling just here right where you need it doesn't have any other grip anywhere else other than this contoured um, groove in here that really does help with grip also. This stip in here really keeps your three fingers gripped to the stock. This rifle also has a nice thumb rest which is the perfect size for my thumb. I don't have big thumbs, they're sort of, I don't know, medium size, but they really do slot in there perfectly. There's also the option to grab the rifle traditionally around here. But having the thumb up there just means you have less stress on your trigger finger. Coming up there'll be the accuracy review where I'll be trying out my new scope cam. And I'll be taking this rifle out to 55 yards. Which is the range this rifle is designed to be accurate out to. Which is again the maximum range of field target. I'll also be bringing it right into 8 yards which is the shortest range of field target. And see if the pellet has had time to stabilise before it hits the target. So I hope you enjoyed this review. Like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.